we get started, let's uh, bow our heads in prayer together. Our Heavenly Father, Lord, we just want to thank you for bringing us all here today, Lord, on Sunday to come and just be together and to worship you together, Lord. Um, I pray that our praises will be pleasing to you um, and that we could lift up all our burdens to you, Lord, and that you open up our hearts and minds today to receive your word. I pray that you be with uh, you be with the pastor as he gives us the message, and that um, you keep us all safe in the next week. And may you be with us in this room as we uh, join our hearts and praise you together. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Please rise.
surrender my life. I'm in awe of you. I'm in awe of you. Where your love ran red and my sin washed white, I owe all to you. I owe all to you. Here my hope is found. Here open wide here you say my life here I bow down here I bow down here my hope is found here on holy ground here I bow down here I bow down here arms open wide surrender my life I'm in awe of you I'm in awe of you where your love ran red and my sin washed white I'm a wall to you I owe all to you Jesus Now is the time for offering. Uh, let us bow down in prayer for the offering. Father, Lord, thank you for this day that we're able to gather again in your house, in your church, in the community that you have brought us to. We lift up this offering, Lord, that we may use this wisely as a church to continue growing our community to support those who need it so that we can demonstrate your mercy and your grace to those around us and to, uh, as you've demonstrated to ourselves. Father, we thank you for this time of worship uh, as we continue to offer our thoughts, our prayers, our voices. We pray that you will continue to be with us, present us opportunities to grow as a church and as a community. I pray this all in your Holy Son's name. Amen. You may be seated. Today's scripture reading is from James chapter 1, verses 12 to 18. James chapter 1, verses 12 to 18. Blessed is the one who perseveres under trial, because having stood the test, that person will receive the crown of life that the Lord has promised to those who love him. When tempted, no one should say, God is tempting me, for God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he tempt anyone. But each person is tempted when they are dragged away by their own evil desire and enticed. Then, after desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin, and sin, when it is full grown, gives birth to death. Don't be deceived, my dear brothers and sisters. Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights, who does not change like shifting shadows. He chose to give us birth through the word of truth that we might be a kind of first fruits for all he created. This is the word of the Lord. Good morning, everybody. Welcome. Uh, I see some new faces. Uh, you raise your hand if you are new here today. Welcome. Okay, so, uh, some uh, announcements. There's quite a few announcements today, so uh, you should go for your bulletin at home. Um, we have our annual general meeting. Um, the end of next month on May 29th. It's right after the Chinese Sunday service. And like last time, it will be a partial 
uh, virtual online and uh, some people will be here. Um, there's lots of attachment to the uh, e-bulletin this week. If you can go through, there's a financial statements uh, that will need to uh, review and approve during the uh, AGM. And also we'll appoint the auditor for next year, uh, for 2022 this year. Uh, also we'll be electing uh, the deacons. Um, so uh, it will be a secret ballot so that you have to be arranged to come back to church to vote in, in person. And so the detail will be given later. So please look for those details. Um, you also notice that there is um, three uh, deacons no nominated already by our deacons nominating committees. Uh, they are um, Frederick Jung, uh, Janice Lau, and Ruth Wong. Their bios is in the Yee's bulletin. Uh, if you don't get the Yee bulletin, the bio is also posted outside on the bulletin board, so you can take a look at that. Um, and the uh, two deacons will be retiring. That's why we have new deacons uh, being elected, uh, Tim Chen and uh, Frick, uh, Frick Jung. Um, we also want to praise the Lord that um, uh, Brother Jason now has accepted the uh, cultivation leader position this year, uh, so he'll be joining the ECB, uh, uh, EMC. Uh, also, uh, we are pleased that we'll be participating in the uh, JFJ Hope Center baby bottle camping for the first time this year. <clears throat> uh, it's a fundraiser to support um, the family there. Um, the campaign will be launched on Mother's Day, May 8th, so more detail will come. Okay, so if you can read the scripture of the month with me, we'll read it once. But I will sing of your strength. I will sing aloud of your steadfast love in the morning. For you have been to me a fortress and a refuge in the day of my distress. Psalm 59, 16. Okay, so let's join our heart and pray. Dear God, we want to thank you that uh, last week we celebrated Easter. We thank you for your love for us that you sent your son to die on the cross for us. And not only that, he resurrected to give us the hope of resurrection for ourselves. And we also give thanks for the uh, Holy Spirit you have given to your people so that we are empowered to uh, be able to glorify you in all that we do. Uh, we want to pray that the Holy Spirit uh, will sanctify us so that we can live a holy life here that is glorifying to you. Also want to pray that he'll uh, help be an advocate uh, to Jason to help him to do his uh, ministry well. Also want to pray the Holy Spirit will anoint our leaders, our pastors, our deacons, uh, so that they will be empowered to uh, lead the, your people here in WTCCC. And also want to pray that he will illuminate, uh, help um, Reverend Daniel to illuminate your word this morning to us so that we can understand and apply uh, so that we are able to uh, learn to how to face trial and temptation that we are able to come out uh, uh, in a way that is pleasing to you in our walk. Um, we want to give thanks for the Holy Spirit you've given us and uh, in Jesus' name we pray. Okay, uh, let's rise and we'll read the, uh, we'll recite the Apostle quick together. One, three, one, two, three. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to hell. The third day he rose again from the dead, he ascended to heaven, and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sin, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. Good morning, church. Let's bow down before we share the message today. Father God, we thank you that you give us your word and so we can stand and can, we can stand firm in what you have been promised. 
and you're guiding us and may you just speak to us and let us follow you and we pray all this in the name of Jesus amen it's extremely joyful to preach this message especially in this Easter season um, when I just put this message along I always find it is kind of difficult to unpack because um, I, I just always find that like it, it is just beyond what we can do um, I guess the problem is we just uh, always focusing on the problem itself but uh, especially in this Easter season um, I guess that's a complete different way when I look into the same passage I, I, actually I have been uh, got, I've been gone through the, the same passage a lot of times before but this is a t totally different way and I feel so empowered uh, and, and encouraging um, especially uh, when we look at the word trial uh, only um, we would just associate directly to problems or the, the, the things that we're coming with so I will think about a lot of days especially for the last two years uh, we've been through so many challenges uh, things that we've been through um, especially lately when we've been uh, come with so many people uh, down us with um, uh, this COVID-19 pandemic um, and also uh, suffering from all those kinds of sickness that we think seems like I, I, I've been cloud in in a great crowd of troubles and problems and the matter is we just don't know how to get through we just don't know how to get through and then our focus is when when will that be ended and when, how we're going to get through and I guess that is not the the things that we uh, we, we would like to suggest because this is not the, con the, the contest we'd like to uh, share to you and encourage us to do today. I guess it's more like talking about like what is the goal and what is the, the whole energy behind so that we know the whole pictures and then especially when why I'm thinking this is like so important when uh, when we knowing Jesus has arrived like last last week we, we celebrate and he's alive in us and so we know that he's in control and everything is just beyond this cloud of problem so I, I just find that this is the backbone of our faith so lead us to go into this topic because if if death is the end of the, um, of our life and then there's no hope I, I don't think we, we need to go through this because uh, what God would like to empower us and what God would like to encourage us is just beyond all this trial and temptation and I guess that makes this whole topic a big meaning and why we need to learn this faith at work things because we just know that we are hoping things in the coming days and that make the whole topics meaningful from so from the previous chapters I guess we've been through two sections of this part chapters of James and we learn about trial could be a good way a good way God has put us in and in that way he can shape us to be more godly and I guess that that's exactly what I mean so I guess the previous two sections when we look the beginning part of James you've been talked through why it is like a matter so we and and but the believer will ask James to go through this part of trial with joy and that that makes this challenge even more difficult so what about I am just try to define trial a little bit different from uh, what I have been just talked let I give you this this definitions of trial so it will make this whole passage meaningful trial is defined as the things that which may threaten our relationship with God I don't know like you ever make this definitions of trial usually when I as a, as my introductions say a lot of trials will think that we're focusing on our problems our own feelings problem difficulties but I'm just trying to say this because I guess that's how will help us to focus on what James has been suggested today in this uh, part of James chapter 1 he said I would suggest that trial is defined as something which may threaten our relationship with God so 
Eventually, I would make this statement saying that blessed is the one who could preserve under this trial because he could stood the test and that person will receive the crown of life that God will promise to those who love him. So eventually, trial, what I have been suggesting is trial is just a way. It's something that brings us closer to God. Bring us too closer to God. And then, like, if that, that thing itself, of course, it will harm us. It will cause us some loss. But eventually, that doesn't mean the deep meaning of the trial. The, the trial itself is just bring us so closer to God. So, if I would like to say, if we, the, the problem is not we're facing the trial. It's the problem is we cannot pass the trial because doing the trial is we need to go through and we get closer to God. That is a big one. How could we explain this? Because some people will think that if I'm facing a problem, I will think that I'm complaining. I'm complaining and just help me, just help me. You, just like what you said, having a problem, the, the trial itself is just hinder my relationship with God because I just lost the faith. But what I'm suggesting is totally different. What I'm saying is if you go through a trial, if you just try to get out from it, you just try to refuse to take the trial, as a result, you are not trying to go through what God has endorsed to you, and that is the bigger trial. And that is a bigger trial because the trial itself is not like just trying to make you feel difficult and make you feel the problem. As I'm saying, this is some things that God just put inside you, your life, and help you to shape you more like Him. So, but the trial is not, itself is just a very small square. He asks you to have it. The biggest problem is, would you like to have it? Would you like to go through it? So that's why in verse 12, verse 12, that James says something like this. He will agree with what I'm saying. And he's saying that, Blessed is the one who preserves under trial because having stood the test that the person will receive a crown of life that the Lord has promised to those who love him. So he, 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 he celebrates. He, he celebrate. The word blessing is almost equal to to the one that we're reading in the book of Gospel of Matthew. Blessed is for the humble, and he will be blessed. So it is something to be celebrated. And here, James suggests that blessed is the one who can get through the trial. It's not like saying, my version will be blessed, will be the trial to be ended, and then uh, we can we just keep the task. So, because the whole point is he's using this trial as a tool to help you to go. So who will be the winner? Who will be the successor? It's the person that who will stay there, stay there and don't complain and stay there. And then in the end, that person will receive a crown of life as a reward so that he will get the point of it. So the whole thing is not ask God to take away from it. Just don't, don't, don't do that prayer. So the person who... It, actually, there's a story. It's almost like um, when we're reading the prophet of Daniel, and then he, he just went through his life in Babylon. And then he's just being there. No matter that is he he's asking to fast, and he will claim from eating all those uh, fruit from the temple, or he has been thrown into the furnace under the fire, he will be there. He, he just stay there and then face the challenge. I just don't know how he can do it. But it's just so that he stay at that point and he stood and stay there and he hasn't have a point to ask God to take that things away. And that, that is the, the whole mechanism of it. Stay there. So the reason they could get through the trial and tribulation must be because they have the wisdom from God and they could see the things from God's perspective. So like, it's, it's not my things. So have, that is the reason why I set up this definitions of trial. It is not pleasing my will. 
having this trial is like having me to go further closer to God. I don't know if you can agree with this one, but this is something James would suggest, no matter you will agree or not. So that the so the word test here means that they have passed the qualifications. And what kinds of qualifications? This qualification is having the true faith in God in their, in their life. So this is quite graphic. I don't know, like, you, you know that it's the real silver. <clears throat> you may wear a lot of silver. But the thing is, who knows this is the real silver? This is not real silver. So, excuse me. <clears throat> this is not a silver ring. But some people, if you claim this is like a pure silver, you will just put it into the fire. And I have a story that, that, that <clears throat> that's a silversmith. In order to prove that this is the real silver, what he will try to do, he will just put it into the fire, burn it, and melt it. And that is not the end of it. So that will be a lot of impurity, maybe some silver, maybe some other kinds of metal. The silversmith will tell you that when, when you see this is a pure silver in front of you, is when you, that is a whole bowl of silver in front of you in liquid form. And when the silver, when, when, the, when the silversmith can see his own face from the silver, then he knows that that is true silver. I don't know if you understand this metaphor. The metaphor saying that when that is a trial, burn all the kinds of using the fire to burn, to refine this silver, there will be so many impurities. When the, all these kinds of impurity gone, there will be some real silver. And that thing's because it's almost like a mirror, it will reflect the silversmith's face. And I find this, this metaphor really meaningful. It's something like what is here. It's the trial by itself is not trying to make a situation to challenge you, and that's it. He's just trying to make sure that you can pass this test. The qualifications of passing this test is the true faith in God. So the wonder, this is in the context of faith at work. You have faith, we have faith, we have faith in God. But who knows who you are? Who knows who you are? Do you really have that kind of faith? Will, you, will that be just because of one problem, two problems, and then eventually you just reclaim and say, okay, I give up, and then I just don't want to believe in God anymore? No. That whole process of trial will just help you to prove that you are qualified. And, and in the end, what is the reward? The reward is the crown of life. And this is the sign of everlasting life as a reward to people. And at the same time, the reward could be you will have that kind of liveliness live among people. So it's, it's not always that we think that when we go through these trials, okay, after our death and then we have an eternal life. That could be one of it because you just have that truth and then you have the faith and then you believe in it and then you can hold on to it. So no wonder, these kinds of people, they will have everlasting life as we receive the salvation from Jesus. But it's just not so that because I could, some, some people will think that James is suggesting when you have, can go through, you could perceive perseverance and undis all this trial, and in the end, you have that kind of life and you can live it out. And that is the other side of the coin. It's not just one side. Your identity just proves that you have that kind of ability, right? And then so that because you can went through all these kinds of trials, and in the end, you can bless people. And you can have that kind of liveliness and bless people. And that could be a procession they can bear for their whole life. But all in a sudden... <clears throat> James just shift gear because we have been talking about trial for so for, so fast for uh, maybe 11 verses already. And then all of a sudden, he shifted the gear to talk about temptations. And you may ask him the reason why. Why we, can, why we need to look into trial and temptation at the same time. And have you ever thought about James that would like to put these two topics together? 
when I was there, I had been asked this question, and when I was like in a youth group, and my counselor asked me this question, I still still remember because I I, I thought that I can di dissect this question really well, and I don't know whether that could be your answer. And I'm saying that trial is from God and temptation is from Satan. I don't know, like that that will be it. But I guess that James may know that a lot of people like me, and then I just think that okay, we know that. Bad thing is from Satan, and a good thing is from God. But what's the point of knowing all these things? And that is no source of power and no solutions. And I, I, I just, just don't know how to resolve this issue because I just know it. But that's because we just have a, not a very clear picture about what is the relationship between temptations and trial. I don't know whether you, but after all, read all this. I just want to lay these pictures to you and I. This is my understanding about the relationship of trials and temptations. I don't know whether it's, this is my homework after all this, all, all this passage. And I just want to show this picture first, and then we read through the things, and that is kind of repeating what I'm just trying to say. So the blue box is almost talking about God, and then he's got talking about God's plan. And then we, at the yellow circle, and then we have our own desire, and then we have been put into this things called trial. Of course, why I need to put the God's plan there, because we know that the whole trial thing is trying to accommodate what God has been planted for us, just like what I'm saying. It is not just trying to torture us. It's just trying to move us up and then into this trial situation. Everybody, God allowed us to go into trial. As we have been reading James, so far we know that God allowed that to happen. And that's a purpose. Is God just want us to have that wisdom as like Pastor Anthony suggests to us in the last session, if you watch the video, we need to ask for that wisdom to go into this faith lessons. If you don't have it, ask for it. Because what doesn't mean is God has a plan for you. God has his word to you. So we'll ask you to stay inside. So we have inside this big circle, so big red, boxes of trial things. We are in that environment. And where is temptation? Where is temptation? I would think that the temptation is just so that it's something that drag us out from this work box. Drag us out from this work box so that what will happen? We will not go to, we will try to avoid the trial. We would in that way, we also do what? We would like to walk out from God's plan. As simple as that. So where is Satan? Satan is almost like something to like to pull that rope a little bit out. Ask us to go out. He, what is his purpose? He is just trying try to tempt us. Of course, he do the temptations. He allows to do the temptation. But the whole point is, if you don't allow him to do it, he cannot do anything. I guess that's what James would like to tell us today. The whole mechanism is not like say, okay, Satan's do all the things, so we are very vulnerable, and then we cannot do anything. That's not James would like to suggest today. He would like to suggest to us that, okay, the whole mechanism is not the key thing, is we are stay here, we have our own judgment, Something inside us will affect us, called desire. We're going to talk about it. And then, like, eventually, the whole picture is we just ask us, pull us, us out from the, yet, the red boxes of God's plan. And eventually, we walk closer, we walk closer to somewhere, maybe Satan, maybe in the big green box outside, which is outside the red box. So the whole idea is, Originally, God just could give us some of the trials and the, the things that we've been gone through, but eventually, we just try not to do it. It's a little bit different from what we think about trial, right? Because we always think about trial is a problem. But this problem is way bigger, as I'm suggesting. The trial by itself have a meaning, and why God would like to do it. But now, no, you say that because of my own desire, my own thinking, and eventually... I reclaim this plan. I turn down this plan, and eventually I just, I just come out from it. And eventually, temptation happens because of, not just so because of what I like or not, I, I just don't like what God had planned for me. And then eventually, I just come out, 
and being tempted to somewhere, maybe Satan, maybe the world, is just so that anywhere outside God's plan. I don't know whether you will like these things because it's like so. Then that, that makes temptation become something. Hmm. If you will like make a statement that temptation could be something like, like a mechanism to dry out from the trial. So no wonder James would like to connect these two ideas together because trial may be some things that we don't like, but it's a good thing. But the temptation is the things that help us to. Ask us to come out, and we are no longer with this plan anymore. And that could be a very, very, very difficult situation. And some people may have this situation, a statement like that. Often, when our circumstances are difficult, when we find ourselves complaining against God, question about His love. Resisting His will, and this point, Satan will provide an opportunity for us to escape the difficulty, and that opportunity become temptations. Is anything? So think about it. Whenever you tempt to sin, you tempt to stay away from God. Sin against Him is everything that you think that I just don't want you anymore, and that could be that. You turn down this temptation. So go back to what James has been said. Can I go to the next slide? James thirteen say, "When tempted, no one should say, 'God is tempting me,' for God cannot be tempted by evil, nor He tempt anyone." So he said, "No." Nobody will say that God is the executor of the temptations. Like, like go back to the topic. So, temptation by itself is not what God would like to do. God just put you into a trial, but temptation is somewhat different. It's a different mechanism. It's very different from God would allow you to go into temptation. So, say you you can understand it because it's who will allow you to go into temptation? It's you yourself or some other things, including Satan's. God is holy; He could be related to anything with temptation. By nature, He cannot be involved in anything about temptations. People could be accused Him that He tempt people, but no, that is wrong. That is wrong. So, where is the temptation coming from? Next slide. But each person is tempted by when they are dragged away by their own evil desire, and attracted. So very clearly, it's a decision inside. Each person, we know that there's something fair. Every human being could be tempted in some sense. It could involve Jesus Christ. He could be tempted too. So many people, but dragged away by their own evil desire is the problem. We can see. Very similar words before here. Verse thirteen mentions that God would, could not be the source of or the designers of temptation. Instead, our own evil spirit pleasures could be the source of temptations. That is almost like a seed here. Desire emphasizes of the things that we our heart longing for and focusing at. Hungerness emphasizes on the intensity. On this focus, so sometimes we just hunger, and the hungers are so strong, and that is the hungerers in our heart. If there is no law, and we will go effortlessly to our own desire. Think about it. If we, just like the picture suggested, we have one side have God's plan, but on the other hand, we just don't like it. Not or that is no words, no God's word inside. No wisdom inside. No wonder sometimes we just swing to the other side and just rely on our own desire, and we just try to get away, and that that make a very strong thing. So in the end, who put ourselves into the temptation? Here, in the end of the the whole mechanism of trial, we just don't like it. So that's why in Proverb four twenty three, next slide, please. Uh, 
then that oh okay I, I'm just trying to read you that maybe I don't have this. They say uh, the proverbs say this words like this: Above all else, guard your heart for everything you do flow from it. So the proverb is just try to 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 suggest to us that if we really like to be holding tight to this mechanism, we need to make sure that what is the things in your heart. Of course, it's not just like the physical. The, the heart, the muscle part of it. It's more like a spiritual part. It's more like talking about what initiate your behavior, who who are you falling with and what so if there is no words of God inside that will be like more strongest wing to the world side or your uh, desire side. So we know that everything is suffering from our heart. So in order to prevent all this being, you are being tempted, you may need to get closer look to what has been preserved in our heart. When sinful nature becomes something really solid, and you could be a habit and hindrance our relationship with God, in fact, it could bring us further, further, further away from God. And we know that this is the true meaning of that. So something like what James 1, 15 says, after desire has been conceived, it gives birth to sin, and sin, and it is a fruit grow and give birth to death. So it starts from very, very small, and then it grow. So it, it, I, I guess a lot of people thinking about why all in a sudden, James suggesting all this, of course he's talking about trial and temptation. And when we go back to the next verses, next slide please. Ah, this is where we go, okay. We go back to um, verses 10 and 11. He talked about some very worldly scenario, especially for the richest people. Verse 10 says, But the rich could take pride in their humiliations, since they will pass away like a wild flower. For the sun rises with scorching heat, and the weather, the plant, it blossoms forth, its beauty is destroyed. In the same way, the witch will fade away. So that, like, that is a very short extract that from the previous few verse, suggesting that there are some people still will bragging on their witches. But he, at all, in a sudden, those things will be gone so quickly away. So in the end, they were following all these kinds of witches, and but the suddenly they will fall so quickly because all these kinds of things will with the suddenly. So what James is kind of suggesting that like we just don't need to bragging on these kinds of elusive things. That is those something very short terms and then you will not someone go to for it. And he talked about this experience that we you need to guard our heart. Sometimes we just follow it. If you would like to brag, brag for something higher. Don't brag of something that's this low. So what is our higher calling? Go back. We know that God has a big plan for us. And he has a big uh, role for us to play and then just we just need to follow that one so like he he in, in particular in some sense when he's talking about guarding our heart he's also talking about how we can focusing not just all these kinds of earthly things and beware because these things just help you to be tempted to go out to choosing something less variables so this is the whole plans of him so keep on saying from verse 16 and 17, he said, Don't be deceived, my dear brother and sister. Every good and perfect gift is from above. Coming down from the fathers of the heavenly night, he who does not change, who does not change like a shifting shadow. So don't be deceived. What is the things that would, would which we could be deceive us? I go into what we learned so far. We know that we could be deceived that doing the trial things that God is tempting us. We could deceive us to bring God. Instead, we don't know the biggest problem is our own desire and inside pride. We could be deceived that we can indulge in our own desire. So we always have these guys because we just walk out from that big red box plans that we got already. We're just thinking. We bring other people. We bring God. But James suggested that don't be deceived that we could, instead of offer of James, and so who our God is? So who cool. we we being deceived by so many things and who who our God is and James gives us this answer, God is not the author of temptation. Instead, 
He is the source of every good and perfect gift. God is the unending source of goodness, goodness and that is no one moment of changing. This is, is it your, your, your experience? So focusing on something, no wonder like in the previous chapter, if you just don't have this wisdom, James encouraged us to do that. Ask for this wisdom. Still remember? If you just don't have this wisdom, because this is so crucial. This sight, could, we could be loose like sighted because sometimes we're just being tempted to go this far. But if you just don't have that thing, if you have the, that, that intention, ask God for that wisdom. Seek God's word and seek for his will. And we could be deceived that also we can indulge in our own design. But God is not. God is something that, like, God is, is, is so good, and he is an unending source of goodness. And that is no one moment of changing. Please, James mentioned, don't make this mistake, and don't overlook this problem anymore. And I really do for all these people who don't have the wisdom mentioned in Verse 3, and he, they could ask for it. And James just keep on emphasizing God is the person of goodness. Like all these kinds of, like all the good creators. And I, when I look, look into this part of the scriptures, when he say that good, God is so good. Still remember in, in Luke when that is a young man called Jesus good teacher and who should I receive like? And because he is so good, and he, he is not just like the, the, the definition of good for us so far, and he means perfect. This God is just perfect and could not be missed, and there is no point that we can stay away from him. And he is faithful. God is unchanging. And the metaphor, what James is using, is mentioned that he is not like the eclipse. I something from people, if you look into the star and then the moon, and then you know what's the meaning of eclipse. But whenever that is the earth or the moon is kind of moving, I don't think the sun is moving in our system, right? But when we see the eclipse, we say that like either our earth is rotating or the moon is moving. And all these kinds of things is moving, and they, they create different shadows on different planets. So that, that make it eclipse. And that is the ideas of changing in, in, in the figure of speech in, this, in, uh, in, in the passage. And however, God is none of this. So whenever you see something like almost like a shadow, shadow itself is elusive already. And then on all, at, when we think about the eclipse, we think this shadow is kind of rotating and always keep on changing the shape. God is not like any of this. That is, God is the heavenly light and he is not going to change. And what he's instead doing, he chooses to give us birth through the work of truth and that we may be the kind of first fruits that all he has created. And that is exactly what he, he is. He is the person, just like he is the person to give us his word to us. So that's why I go back to the whole ideas. Please, when you go, oh, would like to overcome the trial or temptation as a one piece, think about it. What is your conclusion at, at, at this point? At least you will need to have that perspective knowing that what is going on. Of course, temptation, the trial itself is not like a no, no meaning thing. God make it meaningful to you to shape yourself into it. So that is like a whole meaningful. So you need, really need to know what God is doing. Sometimes it's hard. I, I just don't know, like, when we went through something that's just beyond, blow our minds away, sickness, war, when you're losing your job or losing your mind, and then you go through something. But have you ever thought that when you would like to give a meaning to all these trials because just God loves you, and just God would like to put you into this trap because he just wants to shape you. But if you don't have this perspective, what will happen? You just keep on complaining because your suffering is meaningless. What's the point of having this when there is no meaning? Of course you will complain. But I guess that the whole thing is he is the person stay there, faithful to bring us, and then he will help us. So that's why... When we need to stay firm in these kinds of work, we need to have him to think about him. 
And James said that he is the person unchangingly give us the word of truth and me that we will become the first kinds of first fruit that all he has created. It's almost like the first birth of what he has been endorsed to you and then asked you to do. So that is a progress. First fruit is just the first sign whenever you grow something. I don't know whether you, you have the experience of growing stuff. But the thing is, whenever that is a seed, you cannot see it quite frankly. But eventually, who knows what kinds of fruits that this plant will grow. It's the first fruit, right? Whenever, even no matter orange or peaches or apples or anything, that the first fruit is almost like an indication of life, saying that, okay, eventually, this whole plant will have full of this fruit. And because of what? Because God just gave us his word, and then he will induce all these kinds of development. And who who knows that he himself, instead of like a tem- tempter, and, but he is now, he's almost like the person stands so close to you and I said, okay, I have given you a plan. And I give you a something that no matter what have you been gone through, you need to have that kind of wisdom. And you need to have that kind of point to go through. So, of course, what is the... What, what is the solution to so get through all these kinds of temp- trial and temptations? It's something that you really know what God is really doing. Who God really is and why. What the thing he has been prepared for you in front. And what is that grace that you need to... And that ultimately, I guess why I, make, I think this passage in Easter season is so strong is... That is like an exit. That is an exit. A person who is going to pass, all of you who have that kind of faith at work, you will pass all these trials and things. But the thing is, you need to keep yourself there. And then you just try to have that wisdom to believe in him. Two passages that are going to be an encouragement for us that God just help us to get through this. Philippians 4, 19 says, God shall supply all of your needs according to his riches and glory in Jesus. It's given. So this is like he give you the trial, he give you all the things, and then you are there to be with him. So who have this kinds of wisdoms? Who supply, give you this kinds of wisdoms to go through? Lately, when I just pray for... Um, uh, Albert and Mary, when they went through all these kinds of long trial, because um, Mary's sickness has been like a, more than a year or two, and I always like thinking, of course, he, they have a prayer items. Always thinking that okay, uh, we uh, they need all kinds of different surgeons or different kinds of specialists to helping them out. But I guess one thing that I keep on praying for them, of course, for healing, and the other thing is I'm just healing their spirit to know that what they have been went through is something that could be understandable. Could be something that God just gave us. Of course, that is totally different from numbing the pain or just resolving all the problems they had gone through. So, of course, that is one part of it. But the thing is, I'm just one wing, one through, got through when I get through this passage is I hope that they will not lo- lost their faith in thinking that God is with them uh, in all these kinds of things, and that is an exit. That is an exit. And then that is, a, I hope, to, to go through this, and then at the end of it, we know that God is helping us to, to go through all these kinds of trial. Second things from 1 Corinthians 10, 13 say, No temptation has taken you, but it's such as a common to a man. But God, who is so faithful, will not allow you to be tempted above what you are able, but will, will with the temptation make a way of escape that you may be able to bear it. Again, this is a beautiful passage from 1 Corinthians. If, you, if you've been through these kinds of difficulties that like Paul just tried to encourage the Corinthian church that the person that you, you has been went through all these kinds of temptation but he's just tried to stay in God's will in all these kind of temptations still remember like Satan just give a lot a lot of 
things to Jesus, suggesting to him that some things that he could consider, but he take nothing other than God's word. He and then keep himself there, and he he knows it, and also that he knows that that is an exit, and because that things that he knows that, including into this kinds of trial. Nothing more than you could bear. He will not give you nothing more than you could bear. Do you believe that? So if you think about like, this is the love of God, and then He just asks us to encourage us to stand firm and look into Him. If you cannot think. In, in a trial especially, I guess it is so difficult to look up and think spiritually and look, think about what really, really happening. And I guess that is what James would like to encourage and to do. Stay in firm in this trial and stay away from the temptations. Let's bow down and pray. Father God, we pray that you will give us the strength that we need. Give up the sight. If we don't have the wisdoms that we need, we pray that we really need not our own earthly wisdom or some things that we could do, but what we need is some of what is in your mind and what we you could do, and encourage us when we we cannot look up. And trust into some things that we're supposed to believe in. In that sense, send us your light and enlighten us. When we cannot lift up our head and be have that kinds of faith, for, we have that kinds of faith to believe in you. Help us, and let us believe in you. And we know that we can stay in. And stand firm in all these kinds of trials that we've been gone through. Give us the faith that we need, Father. And we pray all this in the name of Jesus. Amen. May we all stand and we sing the doxology. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. May we receive the benedictions. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of the Father God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all until we. To the end of days, Amen. Peace be seated, and we'll have a moment of silent prayer, and then that's the end of today's worship.